Welcome back, friends, to the shop. So Mrs. W and I are getting ready to head down Wednesday to the uh, VidCon in L.A., and she had some concerns about um, the earthquakes and, and you know, getting into a bind down there. So she asked me if I could put together a TSA-compliant, basically a bailout kit or a 48-hour kit that we could travel with, that we could, that we could get through TSA, TSA checkpoints with. And I, uh, so I've done that. I just got done putting it together this morning. I thought I would share it with you. Here's what might be my philosophy. The first thing that I'm going to want to do, let's say that there was a major earthquake, major, major earthquake, and we found ourselves down in there. Um, it depends on a couple different things. If I have a rental car, of course, the, the, the very, very first thing I'm going to do is uh, go to an auto parts store and try to buy as, or Walmart to, buy, to try to buy as many fuel and water containers as I can, and then I'm going to head to a marina. Um, I doubt that if you had a major earthquake that you could even get out of an urban area like that because of the infrastructure and the overpasses and just the massive track or the power out, no fuel, it's going to be a problem. So the reason why I'm going to go to the coast is because there's not, I mean, there is tons and tons of fuel available on all of those boats at the marina. I was a, um, a, a boat mechanic in high school. That was my job. There's not a boat out there that I can't uh, start uh, and, and make go uh, and work my way up to the coast. And I could be home in, in, inside of 48 hours uh, with a requisition boat or just the fuel. So boat, the security at marinas is low. The, the, the boats are easy to start. So uh, that was, has always been my plan. We could take the waterways right in and, 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 as I said, be home in a couple days. So that would be my plan. So I, it's not realistic to try to get on foot home uh, from such a great distance, but uh, there are ways. So this kit here is kind of just uh, an emergency kit to get us from where we're at uh, to where we need to be. So uh, let's go through the items. The kit's gonna break down into uh, basically five categories, water, shelter, food, communications, and I guess tools, uh, for lack of a better word. So, okay, so here's the deal. So I spent a couple hours on the TSA website this morning to find out what's compliant, what's not compliant. So everything in here, of course, as of this date, uh, is compliant. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to run into a power tripping halfwit that works for the TSA um, that is going to ultimately make the call. So anything you have in here has got to be a throwaway item. So don't put your snap-on tools, don't put your fancy things in here that you can't live without if it's one of those fringe things that if you don't know that you're going to make it. So have an excuse too. If you have some particular things, i.e. tools, you know, that are really going to be marginal, have an excuse and strategically place them in a way, basically hiding in plain sight in a way that doesn't look like you're hiding something. And it's not typically that difficult to bamboozle TSA. I mean, they're not typically the brightest folks in, in the bunch. It's usually you have to, the way that you conduct yourself, you got to remember that copying an attitude and, and being angry, having to deal with these morons, uh, I mean, you can, you can, you know, you, you can really hurt yourself by having that wrong attitude. You just need to be compliant, as, as distasteful as that is, um, and have a good excuse and a reason um, why you're carrying the things you have. So that's why I put my tools uh, that are going to be the most likely, the, the things that are going to be taken from me uh, in the emergency first aid kit. Okay, so this is the first aid kit. It's in a first aid kit case. It obviously is that. There is no question there. So inside of this, I'm going to have a pair of trauma shears. Trauma shears are, according, as long as they don't have the, the blades not longer than four inches, uh, apparently, according to the TSA today, that's going to be allowed. So in here, we're going to have, this is uh, combat gauze, um, an, an IFAC that's going to have, it's a very comprehensive first aid kit. It's going to have uh, wound care stuff, uh, medicines, aspirins, things like that. Gloves, um, a cat tourniquet, uh, a Israeli bandage, and then a Sharpie in here. Now I have hid, or not hidden, but I've decided to place the two tools that are most likely going to be the most difficult things to get by the TSA, um, and that is a pair of pliers and a screwdriver. Now you can have a pair of pliers. Don't get fancy ones. These are just China special right there. If they take them, I couldn't care less. You know, $2, $3 at Harbor Freight. But man, what a capability this gives you to, un, to, to grab things, to, to take bolts loose, uh, to twist things. I mean, you can only imagine. Um, a pl plier is something you do not want to be without. That's why Leatherman's and, and um, multi-tools, you know, that's why they're built around the plier, because the plier is very handy in a regular screwdriver. If you don't think this is handy, then you don't work in a shop, because a leg, just a regular screwdriver like this is probably the most used tool in the shop for prying, for scraping, for digging, for gouging, for taking screws out, for breaking things, for a chisel, for a punch, for a defensive weapon. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, would you want a 200 pound fit guy that's fast coming at you with this? Would you want to get hit with this? You know, I wouldn't. So it looks pretty innocuous, innocuous, uh, but to make this compliant, it's got to be under seven inches. So what I did is I cut that down on the, and I cut it down to uh, six and three quarter inches there, six and a half, uh, and then ground it off so it didn't look like it was obviously altered and it had a smooth finish right there. So this is probably the, the thing that's gonna be the most difficult to get past TSA. Uh, if not, it doesn't matter. The first thing I'm gonna do is buy a, a cheapo knife when I get there anyway um, at a hardware store. So uh, I've traveled, I've never had a problem with this, never had anyone taking it. So what's the excuse when they ask me and they pull this out, why, why do you have this? Well, I'm a, I'm a, a firefighter, I'm an EMT, I'm, I'm a medic. And, and you know, if I, I might come across a car accident and I wanna have, I need to have tools as a firefighter to be able to render assistance. Maybe I need to, to open, pry open a door or maybe I need to break glass in a window or, or a pair of, who knows what, right? It doesn't really matter. You're dealing with half what's there anyway. So you don't have to, um, you don't have to typically explain it. And again, if they take it, it doesn't matter. So I put that there, um, but you know, it's, it doesn't look like it's being hidden. It is part of the first aid kit and I've got a good excuse, a good reason to have that, right? Okay. So that takes care of kind of the medical side of it and the tools. I like to have things in bags um, being organized and it definitely helps um, uh, pack, packing as well. These little Workforce Home Depot bags, I bought a dozen of these or so years ago. They're really, really awesome. I haven't seen them uh, in later years. I don't know if they make them anymore, but man, they're great because they have a divider in there and they're just really super for this sort of thing. Okay, so in this kit right here, I'm gonna have uh, four good zip ties, buy good ones, um, buy quality ones, stay away from the Harbor Freight ones, a pair of gloves, leather, or just some sort of a reinforced gloves. I like these gloves here because they're rated for fire. You could grab things or you could you know, open a hot door and give you a li limited bit of protection, pair of gloves, and anything like this is gonna be doubled up. Mrs. W will have the same thing as far as personal items. The other things we're not gonna double up. Uh, I'm gonna have a small bivy sack right here for it. This is a sleeping, basically a Mylar sleeping bag. I have spent the night in one of these and they are um, very effective and very light. I'm gonna have 20 feet of tube of um, webbing, um, hollow tubing webbing or whatever they call it. This is very strong. Um, I would have no problem repelling off of this. You know, it's a long ways from a from an airplane if they open the door uh, to get down, right? It's tw it could be a 20 foot fall there. I can easily set up um, a repelling device with these two carabiners and I wear a riggers belt, uh, always a wildland firefighting belt that has a fall rated buckle on it. I can get out, I can get my wife out, um, a million different things, tow things, who knows what. So that's, I put that in there with the two, just the two carabiners. Um, shouldn't be any problem with that. We're gonna both of us carry $500 cash in 20s. I've only got 100 here that I normally keep in my kit, but we went to the bank yesterday, so there'd be 500 on me, 500 on Mrs. W. Um, if we need, you know, who, who knows what. Uh, credit card machines are down or anything like that. So we'll split that up so we don't lose it. Um, I'm gonna carry a compass. Um, if I get disoriented in Los Angeles, the different things where there's not typically landmarks, it's not, and not being familiar with the area, I wanna know which way the coast is. Uh, so be, being able to have a good compass is gonna be important. And I've got uh, 20 feet of the, is it the SpectraCord? This is stuff that's like uh, paracord on steroids. Um, I, I move this in and out of kits all the time. It's great stuff. Uh, whistle, Fox 40 whistle, excellent whistle. Um, probably about eight feet of Gorilla brand duct tape, the best. This duct tape is so strong. I've used it on wood and when I pulled it off, it pulled the wood grains apart. It's awesome, awesome stuff. A signaling mirror and a small ferrule rod. Very small right that. That could be, be a problem. Um, the TSA didn't said that they were allowed, so we'll see. I've also got a Bic lighter, which I will keep in my pocket. I don't want them to think that I'm hiding it. Um, and so you make sure that you have that. Um, also, you know, be careful if you are, there's a lot of folks now that, you know, live in states where marijuana is legal. If you use marijuana, uh, make sure you don't use a lighter that has been exposed to that because the drug sniffing dogs and all of that, it's just going to cause you complications. I don't, I'm not, I don't partake my, myself, um, but just something to consider. So if you have anything like that, that has been in contact with a substance, it could even be a bag that you store ammunition in that maybe exposed to gunpowder, get something clean. Don't, don't even fool with it. You don't want the aggravation. So um, just something to think about um, uh, when you're putting your, putting your kit together. All right, bag two uh, over here. 
we're gonna have this broken down into, so this is basically just a bag full of uh, various power bars and Aquafina water purification tablets. Um, as well as, a, I'm a big fan of these things. Mrs. W turned me on to these. They're non-hydration tablets. We use these on wildland firefighting um, and they're basically a small flavor tablet with electrolytes that you can drop into your water. Um, it just uh, gives you that uh, little bit of salt and you know things that you need sometimes if you uh, are in a really hot climate. Those are very nice to have and the morale that comes from just having a tasty drink is kind of nice. So I like cliff bars and power bars uh, typically. Um, so just food items. Food items are not a really big item for me because I can go, I can go a long time without eating food. Water is my main concern. Uh, a good quality battery. It's, there's nothing, I can imagine nothing worse than being in the dark and not knowing what's going on. Cell phones will be down. Cell phones will not work. Speaking of cell phone, before I forget, I will be taking a cell phone, obviously, but make sure you have an app that has an awesome mapping capability that doesn't require cellular signal. I, I would recommend to you Gaia, G-A-I-A. Uh, is the best. We're using it on wildland fires. I use it all the time on dirt bike navigation. It will connect to the GPS satellites and it does not require cellular. Just uh, be familiar with it, how to use it. It can easily get you home, um, providing you have a backup battery system for your cell phone. But get, make sure you have an app like that that doesn't re rely upon that um, cellular network. Uh, the radio, obviously, um, the, the tr uh, terrestrial radio will most likely be functioning. Um, you can get emergency signals, you can get information, you can just find things out, even though it's one way, it just to know what's going on is really important. Get a good quality one, like a Panasonic or a Sony. Don't get China or no name China brands and um, make sure it's double A. Everything in this kit you're gonna find is gonna be double A. They're gonna be the easiest batteries to find and I'm gonna carry extra ones. They're light, they're really reasonably powerful um, and you can swap them between stuff. So that, that's a really good item to have. I'm gonna take a handkerchief. I'll have one on, on me at all times, but an extra one in the kit, um, filtering smoke and water, uh, what, what have you. Right here, cell communication. This goes back to the cell phone. This is really important to me to have the battery backups and to be able to charge these. So I'm gonna have two uh, good high quality um, lithium battery backup things that charge that I can uh, charge my cell phone with. And I've got one for Mrs. W and one for myself. I'm gonna have um, whatever cord you need. I've got USB um, mini for Android phones and then of course Apple, um, Apple cable for the phones that we use, uh, which would be iPhones. So make sure that those are charged and don't rely upon one, have two. Um, it's going to be very important to be able to recharge that phone. You can't rely upon um, the, the power grid in a situation like that. Extra batteries, I'll take six extra batteries. Um, and I've, I threw in my Fisher Space Pen. I want to be able to write notes and, and different things if I need to leave notes or information. I have a Sharpie as well uh, that I keep in here um, for writing on the tourniquet, but I have got two. I, just, I like this Fisher Space Pen. Take your batteries, tape them up like this so that they don't jumble around in the bag and, and discharge, make contact and start give problems, start problems and fire, you know, who knows what. Um, and then two sets of earplugs uh, here, for example. Being around heavy machinery is really annoying, noisy. Um, you could break them out, use this on the airplane if you needed to, uh, but I'm gonna have that. Uh, right here, uh, I'm gonna have a couple of, these are the uh, 3M 8511s. These are, we call them Mount St. Helens masks. <laughs> May 18th, 1980, when Mount St. Helens, just, uh, just west of here, blew up. I remember everyone walking around wearing these things. Couldn't even find them in the store, but these are the, um, the sorry, the N95s. These are the really good ones uh, that we use on the fire. Uh, so if you find yourself you know, in, in a hotel and there's dust and debris, I'm gonna have one for Mrs. W, one for myself. I'm gonna keep them in, my, I take a titanium cup that I could use to boil or heat something with a fire um, or dip water out of a source or, or, or whatever. And the, the cup is kind of nice because it gives it some rigidity and keeps them from crushing and completely getting destroyed. And the titanium cups don't wear anything. Of course, this is not a dedicated kit that I have. I've robbed from other kits. I'm just gonna be real careful when I get back to put them back. Um, I mix and match, match stuff all the time. All right, water is gonna be really important. Uh, of course, we can't carry water through the checkpoint. We have to have empty containers, which is no problem. So here is a 32 ounce, now 
Nanjing, uh, just a basic water bottle that I'll put in the bag empty. Once I get to the checkpoint, I will fill this up at a drinking fountain or buy a bottle of water or whatever. And then this is a one gallon uh, Nalgene water bladder uh, that I can roll up very small and I can fill that up as well if I want to. I'm not going to fill this up at the airport, uh, but um, once I get, you know, if you're traveling across country, you can carry, you know, you've got three days. Th this, this actually for one person, if you're careful, uh, is, is basically a week, five days, four or five days with water uh, that you could get by on. So, uh, and you could supplement that as well. So I'm gonna have those in there uh, for sure. And then uh, next to that, I'm gonna have um, a really high quality Gore-Tex or equivalent um, <coughs> shell or parka that's 100% waterproof with a hood. So this is an old one, high quality, but an old one that I don't, you know, care if I get damaged or lose. And I, you know, you can, the color, I, I thought back and forth about the color. It wouldn't be a bad idea to have something that was a little bit more neutral and not so red if you're trying to blend in. But the other argument would be it's nice to have it as a panel if you needed to notify someone, aircraft or anything as an emergency, uh, to be able to take that down or to be able to wave that. Something red, of course, you know, it very stands out. But uh, I don't know, you know, maybe I'm overthinking it. And I, I'm taking a space blanket. It doesn't take up much space. I love, I absolutely love, love, love. This is one of the most versatile tools in the whole world is the original six foot by eight foot space blanket. I carry them, I, I, I use them to get underneath the car working on stuff or putting tire chains on to keep my clothes clean. I use it in the back of the van as a shower curtain so we can shower, have some privacy. I, I've used it on wildland fires when I had to be on watch all night, freezing to death in an exposed area. Um, they can be used as a litter, as a shelter, as a waterproof barrier. They're very warm, they are awesome. Don't cheap out, get the original ones. Um, and they don't take up much space. They're just absolutely fabulous to have. Um, and then the last couple things, um, an extra pair of glasses, if you wear glasses in a good sturdy case, uh, so they won't get crushed. If you were to get your glasses lost or damaged, uh, that would be a huge, huge problem. So make sure you have a backup set of glasses in a good sturdy case. Um, and then finally in here, I'm gonna have um, two one gallon freezer bags, the, the Ziploc brand, the heavy duty ones. There's one uh, folded up inside here. There's three of my shop towels here. You could use these for TP for wound dressing, for starting fire, uh, for whatever. And then um, these guys here, these little, uh, these are the really awesome, these are 24 by 48 giant, they're like baby wipes, but they're huge, they're like a towel. Uh, we use these in wildland firefighting as well, and, and they're, um, they're really nice. Um, so I've got two of those in there uh, in case you needed to clean up or who knows what. <clears throat> uh, I use them all the time, uh, so that's kind of a, personal sanitation, a little deal with the extra, the two bags in there. Um, that that concludes that. I wanna talk about bags for a minute because that's really important and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. When it comes to travel bags, your choice of a travel bag is really, really important. Stay away from, and you'll see these guys all the time, stay away from the tactical looking stuff. I mean, I, you go to the airport and there's a dude, he's got all the max Maxpedition, we've seen the guy, right? All the max Maxpedition stuff all over and the whole thing's covered with Molly and the morale badges. All that does is just scream prepared guy or, or prepper or survivalist or whatever and it draws attention to yourself. It draws attention from security, it draws attention from the TSA. You just don't want it, you don't want attention. You wanna look like, you wanna look like someone who shops at REI, right? Because who is less threatening than someone that shops at REI? Patagonia wearing, um, beta or <laughs> I guess it's gamma male, uh, soy eating, latte drinking, you know the type, right? That's what you wanna look like. You don't wanna be threatening. Uh, you want other people to get attention. So have something that does that's super secure and super fast and super light and that's really well designed for travel. And the best that I've found are these Osprey backpacks. Osprey is super, super high quality. You're gonna look at the price of it and you're gonna have a heart attack because it's expensive. But their warranty on the stuff is unbelievable. Unlimited, you can blow out a zipper, you can tear the thing up, you can have it for 30 years, they will replace it. Uh, it's worth the money. And just the form and function of it is awesome. This particular pack that I chose originally for our trip to Europe is, a, is the Porter 46. This is 46 cub cubic liters. Liters? I forget all of it. Stupid metric system. Um, but I bought this for Europe. I traveled two weeks out of this bag. I don't like 
uh, checking bags. I don't like uh, pulling the cart around and all that stuff. I want to be fast and agile. I want to be able to move and react quickly in an emergency or just if you need to catch a flight or, or there's layovers and you're running through the airport dealing with all that stuff as a pain. Uh, you just don't need it. You don't need to pack that much stuff. If you pack smart and you buy good equipment, you can live out of this pack. I can live out of this pack for six months by myself personally, uh, anywhere in the world. Mrs. W has an equivalent to this. Jack's got one. This is what we carry. When we go to the airport, this is how, how we're, we're, we're rolling, man. I mean, we're, you've got a good hip belt. Um, you've got your, your chest strap, uh, very ergonomic straps, very high quality, very secure. They're, they're great packs. Um, uh, they'll last you a, a lifetime. This particular one I like, I call it the Beetle because it's very secure. You can be in areas you know, where you got some dodgy gypsies and different folks and pickpockets and they'll come up with a knife and they'll slash your pack and they'll, they'll pull stuff out of it. But this has kind of a heavy reinforced, it's almost like a, like a beetle shell that wraps around uh, once you get your stuff in there. So you zip it up and you, can, and you can cinch that down there and it's very secure and it's very abrasion resistant. You can chuck it, you can throw it, it's, very, it's all padded right here. It's probably one of the most durable packs that you're gonna be able to buy. And if you have delicate items inside like laptops or iPads or different things, it's gonna, it's gonna really help to protect that. Also, and I didn't maybe include this, have a TSA approved lock on this. So what I can do is that these zipper poles are designed to have, uh, to receive the locks. So you can, zip, you can zip them all up, you can run those zippers down below like the beetle shell, put that lock on there, and this is a very, very secure pack that you're not gonna get, you know, you're not gonna have any problems with. Um, the way it's laid out is very, very smart as well because on this front flap right here, you're gonna have access to all your electronics. So you have a sleeve right here for your, your uh, you know, put a MacBook Pro or a 15 inch laptop in there. You've got a separate sleeve for a pad. A lot of people travel with pad. You're gonna have room for your cords and all your cables and your chargers and all that stuff here on the outside because that's the stuff you're gonna wanna access at the airport. You're gonna wanna take that out when you're on the plane or when you're waiting. You wanna take it out, check your emails and stuff. And to be able to have that not to have to dig through a whole pack is very handy. So you simply just zip that out. And there's even an outside one here where I'll keep power cords, charging cords or magazines or your book if you wanted to read or something like that. So that's a very good design. It all um, zipper closes. It's got security latches on it so stuff won't fall out if you tip it upside down. They're very, very good packs. Um, just to go inside from there, and it doesn't look tactical. It looks like, looks like an REI soy, soy boy type of pack, right? Uh, you're going to open this up into the main compartment right here. And this is uh, semi-rigid because of the padded sides on there. So it I wouldn't say it's crush proof. It's not like a Pelican case, but it is very sturdy and it has a strong structure to it that will protect it. Um, and you have um, a very cavernous area right there with two zipper pouches on the side, which are really handy for carrying shoes. Because oftentimes your shoes are gonna be kind of dirty and you can put them in there and it will keep it away. Or if you have something that's wet, maybe you like have some uh, swimming shorts or different thing, you were, you know, went swimming at the hotel uh, and they're not dry yet, you can poke them in that mesh bag and they'll still, get, they'll still be breathable. But uh, 46, 46 liter bag or whatever it is. And then the top, which is very nice. Um, what I like about this one is, things that you're gonna to need to access, maybe your passports or documents or different, or keys um, that you can access at the top zipper without opening up the beetle shell, right? So it's a very, very good design. Moving on to the back, you can see very good straps, uh, heavy duty, you know, ergonomic straps, they're not just cheesy ones, and these can all be stowed. So if you don't want the backpack look or you don't want it to look like a backpack or be a backpack, you can simply unclap, unclamp these guys all of the straps will stow down inside. You can zip it all up and it's very smooth and clean. It's not gonna catch on stuff. And then you have a nice reinforced padded carry handle right here that you can carry it like a duffel. So it's, a, it's an excellent pack. I would highly, highly recommend it. It still looks like new and we've had them for years, traveled with them uh, forever. So that's, that's kind of the theory on there. It does not look tactical. If you need to go, if it's like, hey baby, we need to get out of here. It's, it's an earthquake. You know, it's, it's four miles to the marina. We're putting our backpacks on. We're gonna have sturdy shoes and we're heading, heading west to the coast and we're gonna get a boat and we're gonna get out of LA. Uh, that will be the plan. So clothing is a whole nother thing. Make sure you have good quality shoes, have some hikers, uh, something sturdy footwear. If 
you have your hikers, if you're worried about fire, any, any, any sort of a fire, if you're going down there and uh, make sure you have clothing that are not synthetics, make sure you have your, your underwear and your base layers and everything are merino wool or cotton. Your pants are cotton, your jackets and coats are cotton. Um, I don't, you know, it's not always possible, but uh, just something to consider um, when you're putting your kit together. So I hope that helps. Um, just some thoughts um, that I had on, on our TSA survival kit. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. We'll see you guys on the next video.